Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. Clearly, Elon didn't put money in the meter and uh, decided to knock our internet down from someone we don't know where. But uh, we'll give it a few minutes. Looks like we're back. Better luck this time. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. We'll uh, just give a couple more minutes and then uh, we'll get back into it. Uh, I think most people, okay, we're in sync at least. Okay, back in the game. Uh, we're just going to make sure we're on YouTube as well. Hello, everybody. Hey, Sean. Hey, Tom. Hey, Andrew. And uh, and then we'll get back into to play. Hopefully, Sophie can, uh, can come back on as well. And uh, we can go back from there. Good. So welcome back, everybody that's joining us. Um, I think we are looking like we're good. Yeah, audio is back all in sync. So we've had a brief introduction from uh, yourself, James. Um, I'm not sure if everyone actually really heard what uh, what, what took place then, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, so, so, so you've experienced full self drive now for your same sort of three to four weeks. Um, yep. Are you enjoying? Yes, very much so. I mean, I, I'm I'm in the IT industry. I'm a, I'm a total geek when it comes to technology. So I'm loving it, loving it, and finding any excuse I can to go out and play with it. Yeah, that's, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I think everyone in the well, probably the world, but certainly uh, in the UK, at least from our point of view, are, are very jealous of, of you all having a having that play because uh, you know, for us, we're we're probably a good way away from uh, from receiving full self drive uh, legislation in the UK or, or Europe. In, in fact, is uh, is quite restrictive. So uh, just to hear tidbits of information for us, at least, is uh, is really interesting and it's great to see. So, so how many software updates have you had since it started? Uh, so the first one was the dot, dot 10 revision, then we went to 11, 12, 13, and then jumped into the dot 44, 2020.44. So uh, yeah, so we've been through, this will be the, the fourth, I guess the fourth revision. Got you. And have you noticed noticeable, noticeable changes between those software? You know, how yeah, uh, so the Elon, Elon's tweet about two steps forward, one step back, it's it's so much, that, that kind of sums it up so nicely. It's because as, as it evolves, you're seeing those improvements and slight changes in other areas, and then it improves. Over, but overall, it's definitely moving forward with each software update. Got it. Um, perfect. Yeah, so uh, I don't think Sofian's joined us. If he is, Josh, why? Just pop, pop him in. I don't think he has. I've, I've just tweeted him again to uh, to get the link. Um, so what's the number one thing that strikes you with full self-drive be beta that you, you maybe didn't expect? Uh, you didn't maybe necessarily think it would be so good at doing? That that initial just the, coming out of the gate, it was taking you know left turns at a traffic light perfectly, and taking right turns, and coming to full stop at stop signs, and then progressing through it and making a, a safe and 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 legal turn. I mean, I was just blown away. This baby um, public FSD software stack was was doing such an amazing job right from the start. Yeah. And and have you have you noticed things like the fan the phantom braking was always the thing in the UK um, where some locations certain criteria you know going underneath a bridge uh, on certain roads it would sort of freak out as we would call it have those sort yeah. of things you've noticed massively improved or is that still um, waiting for some you know the full software rewrite. Um, yeah, so we do have that full software rewrite. That's what this beta is. So it's really interesting to see how it's changed because, hey, Sophia. So it's it's, okay. it's amazing. Yeah, so it's amazing to see it's changed. Like anything that previously I had where it would do the phantom braking or it would slow for a turn when you didn't really need to do it on an interstate system or a highway system, that that's the same because we're still running that nav on AP um, and I haven't really tested that because everyone's interested in the city street situations. But with this last update, I was getting, I wouldn't call it phantom braking but I guess it kind of is. What would happen is if there was a car coming, I'm traveling straight through and a car was coming up at an intersection, it would slow for that car as in an abundance of caution in case it was like going through into my path. So it was yeah. doing things like that. And with this update that we just received on Friday, I'm noticing it's more confident in, in, in tracking that vehicle or anything like that to, to make yeah. sure it doesn't break early. Um, after, after, after this chat, I wanna go do a run that we did on Friday night before the update where we saw that a lot and see if it's still doing it uh, this afternoon. Yeah, and that brings me on to my next question. It was like, have you, you've obviously clearly noticed differences between those software updates. Are there certain scenarios that you've literally noticed it change, you know, going around roundabout or, or doing that? Has that 
you've you've experienced that. Can you go? Yeah, very much. Any, any more detail Sorry. into those? Uh, so let, let me see if I can give you an example. Um, what's a situation I've run into recent? Oh, um, a complex intersection that I have in my area. Um, if anyone wants to see some of my videos, I'm on YouTube, just search my name. And I did a video after the update and it was to going to Home Depot. And we have a very complex intersection that the earlier versions, it, 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 it did it safely, but I intervened out of an abundance of caution. But this time it did a proper lane change. And so it was basically you to turn right, you have to immediately get into the next lane, cross tracks, go through another light and left over left again. And just this update, it's been able to handle that much more smoothly. I mean, not perfect, but it, it has improved it immensely just with that one software update. Got it. And, and Sophie, and for you, what was sort of that one thing that you, you, when you first drove it, you were like, oh my God, this is next level? Yeah, I mean, just coming from the very start when I had that experience and just seeing it take that road that I know is very complicated. I mean, just apexing the turns so much better than it was before and taking them at speed. So before I could, I had to dial down the uh, the max speed below the speed limit for it to be able to handle certain turns and stuff. But now I can actually go in. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a speed demon. I go to the track and everything. But I can actually set the speed higher than the speed limit, just like by five miles per hour. Actually, we got that new feature, and I apologize, my dogs are just going crazy right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have the new feature, the percentage, where you can uh, instead of just a, a set speed five miles over, you can go for uh, you know percentage. So. So I've been trying experimenting that out, but I think it helps with the beta just setting it at the standard speed, at the max speed, whatever speed limit. And I love that it changes as we go to uh, on a different road as the speed limit increases, it just bumps it up automatically. I mean, you need that when you have a car that's gonna be driving itself without a driver someday. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that, that's that's just like the, the amazing moments of just seeing it like really process dynamically what's going on as it's coming to a T intersection, you can see the cars coming. Like uh, just yesterday, I was uh, with my son in the car, so I was being extra cautious. Uh, and, and I always have my hands on the wheel anyway to take over. But as a car was coming up, uh, crossing our path, it had its turn signal on. I was thinking, oh, it's gonna turn, but it wasn't moving. And the car just actually didn't turn, it just went straight across. It just might've left it on by accident. So, you know, here in the US, uh, generally people will, um, Turn, use their turn signals accidentally or not use them at all. <laughs> so, so yeah, I was kind of joking. I, I tweeted the other day uh, about just having an option to just not have the turn signals on at all. But <laughs> I guess it might you might kind of fit in more in California, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and am I right in thinking both of your cars have hardware 3.0? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and are we right in thinking that that's the only uh, hardware that's capable of full self-drive? Yeah, it's required for the the beta. Actually, I think you, I can't remember if anyone got it before the, um, you know, last year we got the visualization preview, the FSD preview. And I don't know if people with 255 got it. Maybe someone can correct in the chat, but uh, I think that was already required way back then. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and if we have so, any questions from the audience, we now have about 80 people watching, which is great to have you. We've uh, finally back on YouTube. Uh, I think we're now uh, really good on YouTube, on Facebook as well. So sorry about earlier if you're just coming back. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, fire them into the chat and uh, we can ask those uh, uh, to the guys. So um, thanks for that. Um, have you become more confident, would you say, James, in full self-drive um, compared to maybe uh, auto steer that you're more used to in the past? Auto steer, I was very confident with on highways. I mean, with all my road trips, I got very confident with it and, and comfortable with it. Um, with the beta, I'm making sure to keep myself aware and engaged and and and, and realize it is beta, it, it, but I'm definitely detecting more confidence in the beta software as well and its ability to handle situations. So that's interesting to, to, to just watch as it, as, it, as it itself gains confidence in, in driving on the streets out here. And Sophie, and for you, have you noticed what have you noticed sort of with pedestrians, dogs, cones, that sort of thing? How's that changed? Yeah, so initially, I think that because it's processing so much at a time, I mean, that's why we're there to take over at any moment. So it, it's extremely like, like James was saying, abundance of uh, caution. I think that's a great way to put it. It's, it's being very conservative, and it'll slow down in situations. Um, 
it's it's always like uh you know try from what i do is i i put my foot on the accelerator a little bit sometimes just to push along just saying yeah it's okay don't worry you know <laughs> but it's yeah. uh it's sometimes i mean it requires uh, it requires that speed and that quick response because you only have a short like a window right like especially at a roundabout or something you got to get on the roundabout when you have that gap and so i think the abundance of caution can actually inhibit that a little bit but i think it's just learning it's just like when you're taking a, a, a kid out and you're teaching them how to drive you're, you're you don't want them just sitting there at the intersection forever you want them to take uh, the opportunity when they get it so just encouraging them and being there for them i think it's like you know those old school uh, i don't know i learned to drive in england actually in london uh, when i was 17 and they had cars with two steering wheels so that the instructor could take over you you know, it's kind of like that it's like yeah and, and pedals as well and, and so you would um, you would expect that you've got that caution so that you know we FSD has our back but we also have its back right now too so, so that's super important the driver is still there to to encourage to train the behavior you know maybe I've failed in some of the videos and not completely coming to a stop at intersections but that's mainly just for the video because I'm trying to see if I can get a disengagement but when I'm out there driving and testing like thoroughly every day for hours um, I'm teaching it like disengaging all the time saying look this is the way I want you to drive. Do it this way, uh, not for for some glamour or glory for for a YouTube video or something. So, definitely yeah. working hard on, on making yeah. it better. And is that the same for you, James? Yeah, very much the same for me as well. Yeah, cool. Um, and has Auto Park changed at all? No, yeah. that's not in this beta at all. It, yeah, this you, is we can't bad. Auto Park. Yeah, no. There's, yeah. There's, there's no uh, there's no Auto Park. Actually, one of the things if you go to a destination, it's in a parking lot the car will just kind of stop uh, outside the parking lot. So it's like, yeah, take over now. Uh, it won't actually route you inside or a driveway or something. So if I'm coming home, it's just a limitation of like, they, they want you to test uh, outside of that. But I'm sure they're working on it. I mean, it's just putting like summon, uh, advanced summon or smart summon, whatever they call it now, it, together with this full self-driving, then you've got the whole package. And then if you have the, you know, the auto park summon version, I mean, I'm sure they're working on it. Oh, for sure. Complete the picture. Actually, I, and I did notice we actually did try out the the summon, the smart summon out of the garage, and it does load the the visualizations for the beta FSD. So Sweet. I actually have a test scenario at a high school where all kids go to learn to drive, right? So I might actually take it out there with this rebuild and see how it does as a summon. Uh, call it from a parking lot to come out to me at the curb at the school and see if how if it has improved any with this build. <laughs> Uh, so, given the trajectory so far, what do you think of the the whole robo taxi concept? You know, do you now think, oh, actually, yeah, there's some real legs to that, or do you think, well, we're still, you know, a good few years off from that? James, um, I guess basically what it's going to be is building that confidence for regulators and insurance companies. I can see it. I mean, I definitely can see that future coming true. I wouldn't ha even be able to hazard a guess on when that would be confident. For, for regulators to allow it. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see that future being a possibility. And how about so you, for sir? me, uh, yeah, I think it's accelerating like w much quicker than we thought, like uh, getting to seeing how far, seeing how far they are, are along right now is it's just mind boggling. I think that it's gonna happen a lot sooner than people realize, and it'll just be people uh, regulatory blocking it. It'll be like, yeah. oh, you know, we think it's not safe, uh, but, really this is going to save lives so it would be irresponsible of them to to block the progress because the more cars have it it's going to be safer for everybody right now it's it's tricky because you've got human drivers and then we've got you know these robo taxis coming so the, the cars actually have to do more work because they're processing this um you know it's like a unpredictable human yeah. behavior right <laughs> human emotion i think it's like you know it's kind of funny i was coming up to an intersection the other day and the car the light was turning yellow so the car's like yeah i'm gonna stop for this light i was looking in my mirror and the guy behind me and he's yelling obscenities at me <laughs> it's like this is what the car has to deal with and you know as humans we're kind of used to that sort of thing we're used to the pressure and like oh yeah maybe i should go a little faster so the guy's not tailgating me and i can move over the car's not thinking about that it's just like yeah i'm going to be as safe as possible i'm going to go slower i'm going to stop for this light so that, that sort of mentality it makes it even harder for to have you know, humans and robo taxis at the same time, but that's that's why the software is just so far ahead. Once they're all robo taxis, I mean, the problem is so much simpler, right? You don't have to process all these these crazy, you know, as as Elon puts it, um, you know, reality is really weird, and it's because we make it that way. Yeah.
Right. And have either of you experienced any other manufacturers sort of equivalent or or even sort of auto steer equivalent? I haven't. No, I haven't had, had been able to test anything else like that. No. I've seen videos of it and uh, yeah. I haven't been uh, that motivated to go and try it or feeling like uh, safe, you know, so uh, yeah. No, not really. No. Okay, fair enough. Although, um, yeah, sorry, I should add, um, we had George Hotz on our podcast, on the Third Roads Hustle podcast. By the way, I made these t-shirts up just for fun. Thought it would be nice to have something branding for Third Row. And uh, yeah, George, George's system, I mean, people rave about that open pilot, uh, but you would add it to uh, a car that doesn't have like autopilot, although it does work on some of the early uh, like AP1 or, or like or pre, pre, uh, pre-autopilot Teslas it will work on as well. Sorry, yeah. And that's just like a secondary unit, isn't it, that you install? Right. And, you know, it's you kind of plug it into the ODBC port or something like that. I think it processes yeah. some some of that stuff and then um, able to control the car that way. Cool. And and have you experienced, sorry, showcased uh, full self-drive to non-test drivers, you know, family, friends, that sort of thing? How, how's that gone? Friends I have in this area. I don't have any family in the immediate area. I mean... If, if COVID wasn't around, I'd been up. I would have been up in Canada pretty quick to show yeah, that. But uh, yeah, and any friend that's been in it has just been blown away by how, how competent and how 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 much has improved on the existing software and, and vehicles they have. So it, it's it's been it's been interesting to watch other people's reactions on how it's behaving as well to see how they receive it. Great. And Sophie, I know you've done how many Uber drives have you done in your test <laughs> over the years? Yeah, I think I think I was almost up to 900 drives before I took, uh, yeah, just doing other stuff. But that was really a great experiment, just to see uh, people's reaction. Now with this FSD beta, I know we're doing things a little differently with the NDA. We can talk about it uh, to some extent and and also show other people. But uh, there was a requirement uh, not to do uh, Luber and Lyft in Turo. So I mean, we don't want just. I mean, imagine putting my car in Turo and some someone getting it and go, "Oh yeah, let's let's make some YouTube videos." You know, yeah. I <laughs> but, did uh, I did have that once with the Beats. I was like, "What's this car?" And then realized, <laughs> hilarious. But yeah. yeah, so that's the requirement. So what I have done is, uh, you know, besides my son and taking him out and just he he's just, you know, to him it's normal. He's not like, "Wow, this is like kit car driving," because you know that's what I grew up with uh, seeing Night Rider. Uh, but yeah. he. he like, yeah, I can expect my car to drive for me. You know, I don't want to drive. You know, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, the people that I've taken out besides my son and, and my wife and stuff is uh, just uh, Tesla employees because I know all the guys. Uh, I know a lot of employees, and just seeing their reaction and saying thank you to them and saying, "Look, this is what you guys are working towards. This future." Getting that uh, experience, I, I think the video I posted with um, you know the cyclist coming out on the road that Elon liked the other day. That was uh, actually with a, 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 one of my friends at Tesla. And yeah, I mean, he was just so excited about it. So just getting their enthusiasm re, uh, rekindled and seeing like, yeah, this this is happening. It's it, it's truly a, a blessing. I really love seeing that. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, we always find like children, and I mean, anyone sort of under the age of 10 either knows more about it than you uh, <laughs> or, or just is generally in love yeah. with the brand or, or some sometimes electric vehicles in general, which is even awesome, more awesome. Um, so what uh, do you think the biggest hurdle is for full self-drive, you know, for the future? Is it regulatory? Is it, what do we think? Yeah. I think it would be regulatory, but also, you know, people feeling that it's at that level, that March of nines is good enough. I mean, where do you stop? And, and it's always going to be, it's always going to be improving. It's never going to be done. It's always going to be like some risk factor, right? Maybe even if it's really small. I mean, right now it's just so dangerous to go out there on the road. I mean, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but significantly it's probably the riskiest thing that I do a day. And I, and I'm a risk accepting person, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely we need it now uh but that's why we're trying to get it and that's why elon's smart enough to get it in our hands now so we can try to improve the system exponentially once more people get it i think it's going to be um it's going to be there before we know it much sooner than we think and and do you think the hardware we've currently got is is good enough i mean you've experienced it for the last few weeks yeah i think that it will get better they're already working on the uh you know the hardware chip four. We already found that out at Autonomy Day, so that that'll be in the works. But 
everything is data. They're going to, I mean, they could probably do a certain level, hit the limit, but now they've gone to the rewrite. Now they're taking advantage of the hardware and the software even more so. So they'll figure out what that limit is with, with that processing uh, of, of the data now and the hardware. But I think Tesla's continually get better. Even the same car, like on the same line is, is continually getting better all the time. So we'll see when the next version of autopilot hardware comes out, but I'm sure it'll have that uh, hardware core chip and maybe even updated cameras and things like that. Maybe we'll get some infrared. Uh, I, I don't know when the selfie cam is going to be used, but that's that's also interesting to see what they're going to use that for. Yeah. Lots of cool and, stuff. And so ha have you been informed of sort of how long this testing period is going to be, or is it just sort of like, you know, this is the car, mm -hmm. go, and, go and do it? Yep. I think it just depends on our feedback, right? Yeah. 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 And, and uh, Tesla being responsive to that feedback, James? Yeah, very, very responsive and 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 encouraging us to keep submitting that feedback and, and bug reports and issues and anything like that we see. Awesome. Yeah. And and you and clearly it's it's changing because those software updates, like you said, since since they first started are, are really changing the, the way it works. Um, adaptive speed limits. Uh, does it work? Yes, mm -hmm. it's working extremely well for me. Um, it, it, it's it's responding to the speed signs really well. It's responding to construction signs really well. Uh, even very unique construction signs, it's reading that sign and slowing down for that for that area. So it's it's I've been very impressed with how it's been handling that. How about you, Sof? Yeah, so the adaptive speed, um, I mean, yeah, like I said before, the max speed just changes uh, all the time. It's slowing down for things that it considers cautious. I saw it swerve in the road. James, I loved your video, by the way, of swerving around that uh, debris in the road. I noticed yeah, that yeah. mine did that yesterday for a pothole. And uh, mm -hmm. it was just on a regular uh, street, uh, Grand wow. Avenue, just down the road from me. Um, it was just driving. There was no one else around, too. So I think what the Tesla can do is saying, oh, I have this option because there's I don't have no cars in proximity. Yeah, I can swerve from the, if I need to because I have seen it like when cars are next to you, it's sort of like this boom, boom, goes over the, the hole or whatever. But uh, yeah, and this it had this option and it was just like boom, went around. I was like, whoa, did it just swerve for that? And I think I got it on video. I just haven't had time to do any editing. So I'll... I'll see if I can post that for for people to see, but it's definitely learning, improving. It's just crazy yeah. how how fast it's it's getting. Actually, and I had a similar situation. I posted a video on it where I was in a construction zone with cones on the left and sandbags on the right, and it would no see it and do a nice gentle fit within the Saw space that it had to it. So that was really impressive to see it do that. And and how does it work uh, with cars? So say there is a hazard in the road and cars approaching from your behind in the lane that you would need to get into. How is it, how's it coping with that? Very well. I mean, it's, it's, it's anticipating and seeing that car coming up behind me and uh, wanting to zoom past me and, and waiting to, for that car to someone to yield or to be open for me to move over. So it's, it's, it's doing that really well. Okay. And uh, any right. experience with you, Sof? So I had this really cool situation yesterday. This is with the latest version of software where, I was at a stop sign and then there was a bus and it was sticking out way like cutting off half of the lane. So um, I was like, oh, this is gonna be interesting to see what it does. And so I'm ready to you know, take over and do some uh, evasive maneuvers or whatever. But yeah, I came up, uh, there was a car coming the other way opposite me, double yellow lines. It actually drove onto the line. So precisely, it didn't even cross the lines. It was just like right on the line, had enough gap both sides. Car came and passed me exactly the same time I was going past the bus. So it was like, like this. And you know enough margin to spare that it didn't close the mirrors. I've I've heard that it's doing that now, but um, it was just like yeah, it didn't skip a beat. Totally safe. And I was like, wow, did it just do that? Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was, uh, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the, I watched a video yesterday. I think, and I don't know what it was, but there was some debris in the road, and he, the wing mirror just pulled itself in, and then just opened itself back up like after it went past. I was like, wow, like that. To me, that's just like next. That's so much next level because you you don't expect Tesla to be working on that yet, but clearly yeah. they are. I mean, it's now out there. Um, so, so the missing pothole, uh, the potholes, I think, is a, is a big thing for the UK. I mean, our UK roads are nothing like your smooth, elegant US roads, but um, yeah. some of the ones over here, I think, would be great. And I think the the ultimate thing for us would be like the ability for Tesla to send that data back. To like the local authority to get someone to fix that pothole, uh, you know, almost <laughs> within the week, that would be pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, so uh, w if you're driving along and there's a, a suddenly a selection of cars parked in your lane, how does it react to that? Yeah, I'm definitely noticing it doing really well. Yeah, in, in residential areas, um, I've had the situation 
where we have park, park cars on both sides of the road and then the UPS truck that's sitting there and he doesn't park properly with his, you know, his corner out. The car approaches it, looks and passes them really well. I've also had the situation with people getting out of their cars. So you've got park cars and then a, a, a pedestrian. Yeah. And it, it always gives lots of room for a pedestrian. It, it, it doesn't want to get anywhere near a pedestrian on the roads. And so much so that if a pedestrian turns to cross, it even anticipates that and watches them very closely, I've noticed. Yeah, so uh, for, for me, I've seen it do exactly the same as what James is talking about. Really amazing um, swerves. It gives actually a lot of buffer sometimes. You're like, well, okay, you, you could have made it, but it's like even more cautious and, and swerves out. But it does cross over on the other side of the road if it needs to. I have seen uh, seen it do that. If it's safe, it will go over the divider. So I think that was a question on the, um, on the chat there. But um, yeah, it's always trying to do the safest thing, but it will break the rules if it if it's uh, needs to for that situation. Kind of like humans. Um, so, <laughs> so the next question is: if you're going uh, along either a narrow road or single lane, something like that, and you then suddenly are met with another car coming towards you, have you experienced any of that? What do we think it would? Yeah, do? I think John had a great video he just posted yesterday of that when he was in a narrow lane and the car slowed down and made sure there was a, a place where they could pass. So that, that that's John Tussle owner of Sil Silicon Valley. Uh, yeah, it's it was actually, I've experienced the same thing. It just kind of slows down. We don't have the roads, like I remember learning to drive in, in London and you'd have to find a gap to pull into so the other car could come one way because it's like a one way, one yeah. lane road with those, all those parked cars. So that would be great to train it. You know, once you guys get it over there, uh, I don't know if anyone in the UK has it yet, but- No, uh, it's to do this. Yeah, yes, the restrictions it's in, tricky. The, in the UK, uh, it's, uh, it's limited, but uh, hopefully we'll get there. But yeah, it's just it can be in shadow mode and learning in the UK still. So it's always in shadow mode, yeah. yeah. It's always learning, right? Yeah. Um, and, and what's your experience with lanes without markings uh, or maybe no center line uh, or no side lines? Yeah, I have that all over my residential. I mean, all residential neighborhoods in the US are like that. It's handling it from day one. It was handling that really well. The only thing I've noticed, it seems to favor the center of the lane, like it's anticipating cars being parked along the outer lane. And, and I've been sending feedback on that and it's it's pulling more, a little further away from the middle of the road, um, which is nice, but it, it's safe. It's just my comfort level. It's a little too far left for me, but it's been improving. And 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 I haven't indicate, hit the situation where John did with Silicon Valley with that oncoming one lane traffic, but here with the, the two cars parked and then an oncoming car, it does anticipate really well and, and yield and move over and slow down to, to be more reactive to the situation. So it's with no lane markings on top of that. So it's been doing really well. And how's the braking yeah. been with the, you know, is it still doing a smooth brake or is it harsh braking? How's it going with the braking? <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say that. Maybe talk about braking. Some of some of my videos that I've had because I have my race brake pads in the car. You can really hear that squeaking really loudly, and and so uh, that was another interesting point that is actually using the brakes rather than regen uh, more uh, right now with FSD beta. And I think it does that with autopilot. It was just very, um, it was very obvious to see that because I had my race brakes in. I was like, oh wow, well, you know, I don't hear it when I'm doing it. But it's, uh, it's always trying to uh, do the safest thing. So if it has to break hard, it'll break hard. If it has to, uh, you know, break a little earlier, it's going to do that. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's mostly smooth when it's nothing is going to cause it to emergency break or whatever. But I have seen it break harder and like, oh, okay, yeah, you probably saw that cyclist or something like that. Yeah, like I had the video, the cyclist came out in the road and was going to just go across and the car really slowed down quickly. So that was, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, I've had that same experience, exact same situation where it, it does, it, it fits the braking to the needs of the situation it's experiencing. And I've noticed even more so um, if you have a, a, a traffic signal or some kind of expected intersection and it can't quite see it because you're rounding a corner and there's trees, it anticipates you need to brake so it doesn't get caught having to do an emergency or a quick brake situation, which has been interesting a lot. Go oh, yeah, and how about bad weather? Don't I have that much bad weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's know. Time, <laughs> yeah. when, when the visibility is really poor at night, I have seen the nav on autopilot turning on and off, but it's still the FSD beta is still engaged. So that's interesting. I'm wondering, you know, it's what's happening. So it'll always uh, try to drive if it can, if it has enough information from all, all the cameras, even if one camera is obstructed or something. So 
Yeah, yeah, because it's a big thing in, in the UK for you know weather to be an issue for us, so it's important for us. Um, uh, do you have many roundabouts with multi lanes? Mm -hmm. and, and have you experienced yeah. it? I've experienced the ones with two lanes. I think it tends to do better with the inside lane. Uh, like if you're on the uh, our side of the road, it would be the left lane. Uh, when it's on the outside of the road, if you're if you're going around, uh, I think it's it, it wants to try to you know move to the inside, so it can be a little tricky. But uh, yeah, it's it handles them just as it would uh, any other two lane you know intersection or something. Yeah, James. Same, yeah, same experience. I, I've actually found it not too bad on that right lane, uh, the outside lane of the roundabout. Oh, great. Um, it, it does kind of cut, cut the corner a little tighter sometimes. Uh, exactly, that other that's what I meant. Lane. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it, it overcorrects a little bit. But, I mean, safely, and it, it does finish the, and exit every time on the right uh, exit of the roundabout. Awesome. Um, just going through. So if anyone else has any questions, uh, please fire them into the chat. Um, we can't obviously talk too much about um, things coming to the UK, really. Uh, these guys, you know, are obviously in the States and have no say, unfortunately, in uh, in any of that. But uh, what about speed bumps for you? Have you experienced that? Is that the same as auto steer? Yeah, it's, it's been, it depends. Like I, I've had a situation where it slows for every speed bump and then I've had situations where it doesn't slow for the speed bump. So I think it, the, the biggest pattern I've seen is um, if it's a really well-defined speed bump, it sees it ahead of time and slows down. Some of the other speed bumps that I've had, had issues with, they've been very small speed bumps or they've been in a shadow of like a tree or something like that. So what I've been doing when I see that is I just disengage so it triggers that log for the beta team so they can, you know, train the neural net for those situations. Um, and I actually, I, I have a test route to, to keep testing that out every time I get an update to see how it's improving and keep giving that feedback. Yes, right. the speed bumps for me, you? it's exactly the same. Some it does really, really well. I guess it just depends on how the camera is seeing the, the angle yeah. of the bump. And then there's, I noticed these bumps that maybe I didn't even notice before because I'm like, the car, oh, the car slowing down. Oh, that's why. Because you know, sometimes you're just so used to a certain road, like we know these roads that we're taking quite well. Uh, but the car is seeing them for the first time in most cases uh, with the new software running. So it's like, oh, yeah, maybe I should be a bit cautious. And then it knows like next time it can go a little faster. So it's really like this, this teenager learning to drive and figuring things out. But, but I've noticed that um, it does really well when there's um, – when the bump is on like a flat surface, if you're going like down, if, if it's like a ditch, like a, um, like a gutter or something, you have to yeah. go over like on a two streets going across that sometimes it might go a little faster than I would. And uh, so, so I've been training it too. And then I've gone back there and tried it out again and it, it's learned. So it's, it's really amazing. And that, sorry, I just want to say one more thing about feedback that we've given, given to the, the testers. They have been amazing. Like mm -hmm. when they first came out with the new visualization with the wider, the middle wider now it's like really wide <laughs> i actually wouldn't mind if the map went away so i know some people will probably hate me for saying that but yeah. I, I like the visualization but um yeah when it when the second the first wide view came they put all the icons on the left and the steering wheel was really small so i gave them feedback saying like it would be better to have that steering wheel bigger so we could see uh if it's if it's in uh, if autopilot is on or not it was really hard to see that when they first yeah. came out so they did they took that they fixed it so fast i mean we got that version a week before so so now we got the latest version just like elon said it would be five to ten days between versions which he's true to his word there and um yeah it's much better i really like the layout now at the top it's really cool yeah, and, and, well. i assume it's pretty obvious uh, really, but are you, do you understand now everything that's being displayed uh james is it is is it clear what everything's doing yeah, so all the colors seem to be pretty intuitive. I mean, like, for example, uh, any median is purple lined, uh, curbs are red, uh, cars in your path are green, cars parallel, I think, are like, if I figured it out, pink or like a purplish color. So, yeah. Yeah, it, crossing traffic is purple. Yeah, yeah crossing traffic yeah, is purple. So, all that yeah. stuff was outlined to us in the very first email that came out. They, they gave us a, like a color code scheme. So, yeah. I mean, you could either memorize it or, I mean, you just get to know to see like yeah, what, yeah, what's what's, and. I actually find it really interesting to watch where the boundaries of the road are. So it's it's constantly trying to see where the drivable space is. And yeah. uh, one of my friends who we had on our third row podcast was one of the guys that worked on the um, the actual uh, for, for for the summon. And he said curves are really hard. That that mm -hmm. was uh, my friend Isaac. So 
detecting where the edge of the road is, is, is quite a task. Now we're moving at speed. So it's not like you're in a parking lot and you're going five miles per hour. And, and some of the things that I noticed, like when the curb is not a, um, like a solid line or something around my area, we have a lot of these rural roads where it's not just, there's no curb or it'll be a black curb. It's really hard to see, even like for us, it's hard to detect. And then also uh, it, sometimes it's just like road and then dirt, which is the same color as the road. So how does it detect that? It's amazing how well it detects. Like sometimes it gets kind of close to the curb on these, on these roads and they're pretty narrow roads, but it never hits it. And I've been like, oh, okay, I feel like I wouldn't go that close, but it's like so precise. It's getting like, uh, you know, inches away, but never ever touching the curb. So it's, it's amazing the precision of these cars. That's great to hear. So based on the current, uh, imagine you've not paid for uh, full self drive. Would you pay for it? Yes, I would. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know what, as the capability uh, in improves, it's people are probably going to be willing to pay more. And that's why Elon understands he's increasing the price because, you know, how much are you going to pay for when the car can actually drive you one place and you can actually just fall asleep in yeah. the car and wake up at your destination? How, how much value do you put on that having that yeah. time back to yourself? You know, yeah. I mean, it's the cost of a yeah, cross country flight, you know, minimum, isn't it? Um, let alone yeah. the fact right. you don't have to go to an airport, you don't have to queue, you don't have that other stuff. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, don't have to deal with other people or COVID yeah. or anything, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 And as long as we have snake charges, you don't have to worry about charging as well. You can just, you know, the exactly. Yeah. They, I, I was actually hoping that uh, they would come out once, once COVID hit. I was thinking this would be a perfect opportunity it to would. start using those because, you know, then you don't have to touch anything. But um, I mean, that's no reason why they couldn't do it like tomorrow. So I think I think yeah, it's yeah. still we're still in the middle of this thing. You know, hopefully hopefully we can see some of that because then that would be a great test. You know, you oh, navigate yeah. to the supercharger that the car parks itself and charges itself, and it's awesome. Yeah. And I presume our, our question earlier about weather. I presume you've not had lots of rain at all, if any. Um, to no. sort of no. My next question was sort of puddles, water. I mean, we know that the, the existing cars can can signal and understand what water is on the road. Um, I guess it's the same answer to a uh, roads without markings, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, James. Just I was just going to say. I mean, we have some friends that are in the, the 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 social media approved beta testing that are in those areas. Like I believe Zeb has is in. Uh, on the East Coast, along with Kim Paquette, and they've had, you know, inclement weather and been driving in it. So ch check out some of their as well, because they're sharing those videos as they as experience it. So how yeah, are you providing the feedback to Tesla? Is it, you know, every time within the car, or is it email, or how does that work? I don't know what you can give us information. Yeah, so basically, we basically have three ways, uh, thinking off the top of my head, to do it. So every time you disengage, that's immediately given to the, 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 team, the early access team and the uh, FSD, uh, AP team. Um, there's also an icon on our screen that we can tap if we see anything significant we want to report to, to send it in, and then we can email them with you know timestamps and, and information that way as well. Awesome. Yeah. So what I've been um, doing do is doing a, those things too. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say I just made a I've made a video for them, like almost like a full production video, <laughs> explaining that didn't go public. You know, I'm just saying like these are all the little things that I think that could be improvements. And so yeah, it took me a lot of time, but maybe someone will look at them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and how far right. away do you do you think the, a single lane road? You've got cars going in either directions, but the car in front of you is slightly slower, and you think I could easily overtake this car safely. How far away do you think it realistically is for something like that? That's a good question. So I, I wouldn't even know how to answer that. I guess, I guess it depends on its ability to see beyond the car and make the decision to safely pass. Um, I don't know, Sophie. What do you think? I, I couldn't even. My, my gut feeling is that it, okay, like it would do that now if um, the the drive the car in front is significantly below the speed limit. Yeah. Like it would try to um, you know go around it or freeze. There was some emergency, like it had a hazard lights or something. But if everybody's at the speed limit, I don't think it would. No. It's probably not even going to be allowed, you know, to to pass yeah. a car if you're going to have to yeah, yeah. break the speed limit. So yeah. I think yeah. yeah, these cars are going to be safer than humans. I think personally. Yeah, I mean, we, we get frustrated and all this stuff because we want to get there quicker and, and, and everything, but I don't think the car is going to, it's not going to be part of it. 
Yeah, I was actually just thinking about that. Our emotion plays a lot into to passing someone that we perceive as going too slow to what we're capable of. And I think FSD will be like, this is safe. I'm still moving towards my destination. Exactly. The risk factor is too high. I'll just wait this out. So yeah. once we're out of that equation, I think we'll become more comfortable with not even really paying attention to what's happening outside of us. We just know we're going to get to our destination at a set time. And yeah. it'll, it'll it's like being in a, exactly. yeah, a taxi, isn't it? It's, you know, yeah. you're not worried. You're exactly. sat in the back, relaxing, you know, on your phone, whatever. Yeah. Um, and have you experienced any detours or road closures, that sort of thing? Yeah, uh, uh, I came. Go ahead, James. Go ahead. No, please, you go ahead. Okay, yeah. So, so, so I, this is actually some feedback I gave to them with an earlier uh, build is I was coming up and the navigation was trying to route me on the uh, entrance to the freeway, but the freeway entrance was closed. So uh, it's just kind of stopped and it's like, I don't know what to do right now. But uh, so that, that's something that I think the, the driving FSD and the navigation are gonna come together more. So right now they're still a little decoupled, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And so as the, uh, it gets you know, more uh, solid and more integrated, we're gonna see that type of behavior. But right now it's sort of defaulting to us to say, okay, this is what you should do in this situation because it's kind of a weird situation, right? Yeah. I've seen the same thing, and actually, in fact, anything. Some of the issues that I've reported is because it has the wrong nav information that I've had mm. to, you know, don't exactly. do that. Like we just got a big yep. nav update in our cars, and it was handling an intersection beautifully. It's just one of these ones where the left, so it's two lanes going in my direction. The left turns into a left turn lane, and the right then opens up into two to keep going forward. It was beautifully, and then a nav update came. Started to want to get over into the left, even though I was going straight. So that was. And that's going to be that balance because it's all about vision and seeing the situation for the first time and not relying on nav data to, to, to need to make a decision. So it's going to be interesting to see how they how Tesla uh, to, to merges those two and, and understands, oh, wait, construction might have happened or a lane change happened it, and the map data is old. How do, to, to interpret that and, and, and avoid that incorrect map information? Right. And Sofian, have you had uh, any no noticeable difference in the holding of the wheel notifications? Uh, the timing on that over the years has slightly changed. Yeah, um, um, has that I changed? think it's increased. It has increased with this F FSD beta. It seems like we need to trigger that nag more frequently. That, just from what I'm noticing, I think the more stuff that is processing, the more complicated the situation, uh, the more it's like making sure it wants to know that you're there. So yeah. I have had to have my hands on the wheel. And it, it's for me, it's really easy to just put a little bit of pressure and not disengage. Um, but if some people, you know, it might they might prefer to use the scroll button. And I do too, but I just, I don't know, what can I say? I'm lazy. I don't like to move my hand all the way up there <laughs> go, unless I have my hand sitting there. But, you know, it's kind of nice to have, have my hands on my lap and then I can just sort of put a little pressure when it needs to. Yeah. Is the same, same for you, James? Yeah, it's definitely, it's the same. It's a little more nag, making sure we're there and paying attention. And if it comes to a complex situation, it does the big beep beep. You know, you're still there. Yeah, if it'll be that. Well, which is great because we have to make sure we're paying attention with this beta. So. Oh, yeah. And uh, any issues or uh, reports that the cameras are not clear, not the same as, as oh, previously? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I found that it does that at nighttime more. And in the area where I'm at, it gets really foggy too. So if there's fog and nighttime, it'll it'll say um, you know right pillar camera uh, obstructed, but it's still still going on autopilot. It's amazing. No, yeah. and on is, does it remain on full self drive? Or full oh yeah, pilot? yeah, still yeah, on full okay. self drive. That's what I meant. Because um, right. like yeah, there's yeah. no differentiation right now with our FSD beta. It autopilot is FSD beta basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so again, if anyone else has got any more questions, we're going to probably finish up in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes. Something like that. Uh, quickly on on the drives that you, have you repeated the drives over the time the same routes and yes. like what noticeable changes can you think of off the top of your head off of off, off those yeah sure uh, yeah so I take the same route every day <laughs> just to see how how it does better so there's a really complicated five way stop sign just around the corner from my house and it's basically on a slope so and and one of this it's, it's like probably the worst scenario for it and I, I give it to a challenge and it, it has it has struggled honestly with with uh, different situations but when it takes it right I'm just like wow that's amazing because I can imagine some like a uh, 16 year old kid coming up to that intersection and just freaking out because it's um, so it's sloping it's the 227 and Grand Avenue just kind of goes across 
and there's a school right there too. So there's a school crossing right. and then a bunch of the lane uh, markings have disappeared too. So it almost looks like you could go, uh, you could go onto the wrong side of the road very easily. So I've had to correct it a couple of times just as it's starting to turn towards it. I haven't seen if it would do it. It would probably just stop once it realized it was doing the wrong thing, but I've had to correct it there a few times. Uh, and then there was another road around the corner where it would wanted to veer to, into a left-hand turning lane and I have to bring it back, but now it does it perfectly. So it's definitely learning at a, a you know extraordinary pace. Um, and that stop sign, it's it definitely got, I was able to go through without disengaging with the last update. So I was really happy about that. Nice. Got it. And what is that have different rules depending on what's next to them? For, for instance, flashing lights. Do you experience any sort of schools, that sort of thing, thing with those all road condition? Yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, I haven't been able, because schools are closed due to COVID, I haven't been able to have a situation where a lot of the signs here in California in the US, they're basically saying, you know, speed limit sign when children are present. So, I mean, I went through uh, a school zone that said 20, 25 miles an hour when children are present and it ignored it because there was no children present. So, I mean, I haven't been able to put it through its paces and, you know, I'm not, I haven't, you know, hey kids, you want to walk along the road while there's a sign like that and see if it goes down or something like that? I haven't done anything like that yet. We have an idea with some of the kids stuff on a, on, in a safe area for obstacle avoidance that I want to play with. But um, yeah, other than that, I haven't seen like a flashing, there's no flashing school signs I can go test here or like an eight to five kind of thing. So, but it's going to have to be able to read those signs and interpret them properly. So, yeah. Um, and one of the questions is we see traffic lights disappearing outside the field of view of the cameras. But some is, does the beta cars uh, have to stop further back? Or is that field of view not a problem? Field of view doesn't seem to be a problem. Yeah, here in California, I've, I've noticed they have a rule when there's a turn coming up to a traffic light, they put a traffic light off to the side so that you can see the light before you come around the corner. And that field of view, the car is seeing that light and then capturing the new ones as it comes around the corner. Um, and I've never had a situation where the only light is outside of its field of view and unable to see. So it seems to be handling that really well for me. Right. Um, and I think the biggest thing, Sophie, that, do you think, think? Sorry. Sorry, well, I apologize. No, no. I was just going to say the biggest thing with the FSD beta is it's actually taking the data from all the cameras and stitching it into one piece of reality. So it's able to see the light if it's in that on that B pillar or, or, or anything like that. So it's able to keep an eye on that light as you get up to the stop sign and the, or the stop line and the lights off to the side. Right. And Sophie, do you think cameras are going to be enough? Do we need LIDAR? I think, yeah, I think the LIDAR is good. Maybe it might be useful for some situations, you know, like uh, if you want to 3D model a room or something with your, you know, with the new iPhone or something. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I think cameras, I mean, we're, we're doing it with two cameras, right? And from a very weird uh, position in the vehicle. Right? I mean, yeah, sure, we can move our head around. But uh, I think having all those cameras looking at different angles, and like James was saying, because it's seeing in 3D now, it's doing this this new rewrite, it's all, all processing the 3D uh, picture that it's creating. Even if it sees like a traffic light just for an instant, it still remembers that it's there, right? It's not like it's disappeared, oh, maybe the traffic light disappeared. No, it, it knows that it's still there, it just can't see it. So as long as it can see from whatever angle it's seeing, it's gonna know what to do. But then also, as you're coming up to an intersection, it knows already from the mapping data, like as long as that's accurate, it's gonna cross check that with what data it has on file. So as you're coming up to a stop sign, you see a little message pop up saying, you know, stopping for a stop sign at 400 feet or something. It already knows before it can see it. So yeah. it's just a matter of making sure that the data that it has about the nav matches what it can, can actually see. And even if you put it somewhere where it's not mapped at all, the car can still drive and, and uh, you know, process, it might be a little bit slower to react to, uh, like might, might be driving, driving slower so that it has enough time to react to this new scenario that it has no information about. Yeah, I, and I think the same thing. I mean, I don't think LIDAR is gonna be required like Sophie had said. I mean, we only have two eyes and our ears to, to interpret reality around us. So, and our instincts with that. So I think what I'm really curious to see as this beta rolls out to more areas of the US is, and that I personally experienced and that you're some people are asking is rain and snow and how it's going to 
how do we see if we get a big splash of snow across our windshield, right? We just wipe it away and look through as best we can and then slow down for the situation. So I'm assuming as FSD grows and learns, it's going to do the same things we do when we're up, our views are obstructed and we have to deal with the situation in real time. So that's by far my biggest thing. I want to see how, the, how it evolves with that. But it has eight cameras. So, I mean, it should be able to figure out what's going on around it with that. Exactly. Have you experienced any emergency vehicle ambulance? I have, yes. Um, I've never had a situation where I was the lead car and I had to deal with it. I've always been in traffic and a fire truck's come along and it stopped because everyone around me has done what they're supposed to do as well. So, but I have seen it watched as the fire truck or police car passed me on the visualization and it, it currently doesn't represent it differently to me watching it, but it, it I mean, it, it sees it and I can see it as has lights on. So it'd be interesting to know if the beta is the, the, the software stack is flagging that something differently, but it doesn't show us that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had some uh, police cars stopped yeah. over. I think it was on the video that I posted and the car did slow down and uh, there was no, nothing else in front of me. And I had a, a car actually trying to merge in at the same time. So they, they were, weren't were um, requiring me, like if, if if there's a car, if there's a police officer stopped, you're not required to like come to a stop unless they're trying to stop you. You just have to slow down and give them give them enough space. So that's that's not a huge complicated situation. But Elon has said already that it would be coming soon. Like it'd be recognizing emergency yeah. vehicles. So I wouldn't put that past. You know, we may see that. I don't know if it'll be part of this beta, but we're going to see that come. You know, yeah. eventually, probably pretty soon. I would I would imagine. Yeah, because I think Elon did also. Recognize reference about the the cars certainly i think it's where they ever come into traffic uh for a good while you pull up the vehicle can just shoot through like you say it's, it's bad. um perfect we do have yeah, more we'll questions coming uh, uh yeah fire through uh we're coming about to the end now um James, did you have any sort of more experiences, those sort of amazing experiences that you've experienced that you can retell? Um, basically the ones that I, I think I've already mentioned them. So like the, the bikes that I got stuck behind and then, you know, people speeding past me and trying to merge into it. Um, I've, I've seen it handle some um, unique situations like in a parking lot. I, I, did, I did a post with my friend that's actually a, a Tesla mobile tech and how it was able to navigate a very complex parking structure, not not like enclosed, but just like at, at a, an apartment complex and, and navigating very tight turns with people walking around and cars coming and it did it so well, that really blew me away. Um, and then some of those complex uh, intersections that like Sophia mentioned there with like a five way stop and how it's able to, to analyze that situation and deal with it has been very impressive just to, to see. Yeah, I think for me the first time yeah, it, when it went onto the freeway for the first time, that was like the magic moment for me. It's like because it, it never would that was never done that before. I was like seeing it do this, um, you know, waiting at the, waiting at the red light. Where actually it had a lot of traffic around me at the time, so I had to get in the correct lane. Then um, some guys were cutting in front because there's a gas station right there on the corner before the entrance to the freeway. And then yeah, it just basically turned right and then left, and I was worried it was going to hit the curb, and it was just perfect. It actually actually hasn't touched brush the curb at, at one time at all since, yeah. uh, since I've had it engaged. And and then it just sped up to um, match its speed with the freeway traffic. And then I'm just on autopilot and it's just normal. It's just the, you know, the normal experience. But yeah, it's going to get to a point where you can just say some of my car, uh, I mean, you still have to, now we have to figure out a way to levitate ourselves into the car so we don't have to walk. <laughs> 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 but then uh, we can just go wherever we want, and then uh, the car's going to park itself, and you know, whatever you want to do in the car, you can play some ga games or have, um, you know, watch a movie or something. But yeah, that's the future. That I mean, how much is that worth? That's I think that's going to be a, a lot to mo a lot of people. Uh, would you say that self-drive upgrade needs the N MCU upgrade? If you if you're on yeah. MCU. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think it does. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would highly recommend. I mean, if you have any hesitation, so I have a Model S with the MCU V1 and I paid for the MCU V2. Highly recommend it. It's the best upgrade I've done in that car. I mean, not even disregarding FSD, 
that the, the improvement in, in its speed and responses is worth every penny. I can't recommend that enough. Yeah, and, so and it might be those. required for us FSD. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, it's yeah. yeah. I think it's the visualization is the primary thing because you can have a hardware. Exactly. Sorry, an MCU one where three. Um, there's not many of them. About you technically can. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. Certainly for me as well. I mean, I've gone for an MCU two upgrade in the last sort of couple of months, and uh, yeah, it's night and day. You know, everything's quick. Yes, you've got the silly things as we call it, like Netflix and YouTube, but actually navigating from a to b you know that's so much quicker. you know it's probably three times yeah so the pinch speed is yeah. So much oh yeah you're zooming in and out so fast yeah mm -hmm. a few people saying will full fire hardware three uh yes we believe it does yeah. um so if you um you, you will get um it's going to service basically but it depends on your spec um actually I have a little tip there for, for people too. If, if you haven't pre-bought FSD and you have 2.2 two or 2.5 and you pay for the MCU V2, they do replace the F computer to hardware three at the same time they do the MCU two upgrade. So then it's done and it's ready there for when you want to purchase and pull the trigger on the software suite. Cool, and Dennis is also yeah. saying that uh, you now can keep the effort because uh, certainly a few yeah. people will we're having that without it and getting slightly frustrated. Um, I did, did we talk about motor bicycles? We did. Don't think so. No, we didn't. Okay. And it's um, I've had some bikes doing the lane splitting here that that happens in the U.S. But it, usually, when I've had it happen, I'm stopped at stoplight, so there's no ability for the computer to have to do something in regards to that. But it does render it and show the bike coming up the center lane, and and, and I anticipate it would definitely deal with it. And, and then, of course, when we get on highways, it's it's a different software stack. It's still doing nav on AP, so there's nothing different than other people see already. But uh, those always make me nervous, and it drives me nuts here that that's legal, so that they can lane split. You're doing like 70 miles an hour, and a bike can lane split between two cars. That just drives me nuts. Yeah, it's uh, as, a, as a motorcycle rider, uh, it's it, it's one of the riskiest things, lane splitting. But if traffic is t totally stopped, and you're just oh, yeah. going a little bit faster in the traffic, it's that's really like what it's most useful for. But I mean, it's illegal if you're, if you're uh, speeding, right? Of course. Oh, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I mean, I've had experience when I'm following a motorcycle. Yeah, it renders them perfectly. I found that it gives motorcycles a lot of space, which is great. Even coming up behind them at a, um, like a traffic light or something, if the motorcycle's in front with this FSD beta, it'll give a, a lot of buffer there. So it's, it's great. I like that it respects um, motorcyclists and cyclists too. And then with the cyclists, I've had four instances that I remember it did amazingly. I mean, actually, it, which is every instance I've had with a cyclist, the first time going out, actually, the cyclist is coming up off across, like go on the main road I was about to turn onto. It just waited for them, you know, it took its time. It's like, I'm, I'm patient. I'm not gonna try to take this opportunity and go as a human to be like, how fast can I get in front of this cyclist, you know, so I don't have to get slowed down. But no, it was very respectful. And then uh, there was a, a, on that same version, it was like uh, 8.11. I was going down a 50 mile per hour road. There was a cyclist on the right. It moved over, car coming the other way, similar to that bus situation, but it didn't have to cross over into the other lane, but it was at least three feet. So at least a meter of, of uh, buffer space there. And I didn't have that on video, unfortunately. I missed that, but that, that was awesome. And then the other cyclist that was just gonna ride out, ride out in front of my path, the car just was gonna do an emergency stop until it realized the person wasn't gonna go anymore. So uh, yeah, those those three instances were were great. There's one more I can't remember right now, but it was um, yeah, it's, it's amazing with cyclists and motorcycles. Yeah, yeah, it, it does look amazing. And am I right in thinking it doesn't now show you the differences between vehicles uh, other than they're now boxy shape? Yeah, just before, a rectangle, like, a cube. just a rectangle, but different sizes, presumably a, a lorry truck versus a car. Yeah, right. and I've even noticed with pedestrians, the size of the the, the, the rectangle yeah, it's is like, the size yeah, of the exactly. human. And then if there's a dog, it's a, a small rectangle oh, on the side. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 rendering in, in, in what it sees. Yeah. Right. yeah I always I, remember I, when... I like when mm -hmm. Can I well? First came out, they were testing with like a fake dog. It was breaking, wasn't it? So it, it, it knew, knew that it was, but it didn't know obviously it was a dog. Um, yeah, it's quite funny. Yes. Um, so, so, 
to an end now, what do you think is the biggest thing that is still missing from full self-drive in your experience? Well, I mean, other than the fact that it isn't parking the car yet, but that's we're not at that phase. We're still doing the drive. Um, the biggest things that I've the thing that I found that it's missing is is with picking a lane. So here in, in, in Santa Clarita, we have three left turn lanes at a traffic light, and it's just that 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 ingenuity and in going. Oh, I should pick the right of the that left turn right. lane because I'm going to be making a right right after the light. So that it, that intuition and knowing that is coming up. So, I mean, that's, but that, that's going to come just with built and, and it's going to iterate and, and learn all that. But I mean, in terms of everything it's done that I've been like my own impatience and I use that term lightly because I'm not really getting upset at it, but the things that I've noticed is when I'm in a rush and, and it's really the safest thing to do is what I was doing. And, and it's teaching myself to think, no, I don't need to do that situation. I mean, it would be safe and, and we all get habits to do. It's, it's teaching myself to, to respect that what the, the betas and FSD is doing is probably the safer choice and recognizing that and not worry about the guy behind me that's right there, like Sophie and said, cursing at you because you actually came to a stop at a light when you should and don't worry about it. Yes. It definitely becomes a risk factor. Like if he's going to hit you, like, and, and I haven't had that situation, but seeing how beta and, and how FSD would handle a, a complex human situation and, and make the right choice on that. But I, I trust that it will based on the knowing that it's, it's top priority is a safe execution of a maneuver. So, I mean, other than that, it's just seeing how it evolves into parking and, and handling par uh, complex parking lots and stuff like that. And how about yourself, sir? I just want, I just wanted to drive up my driveway. I've got a steep driveway and it won't do it. <laughs> Come on, man. It's like stop yeah. on your driveway. You're like, what? I got to drive by hand? Come on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the neither regular summon or a, a smart summon will actually work for me, unfortunately, in my driveway. It's just too steep. Um, but yeah, it has its advantages. If I, once I get Cybertruck, then I can load up my motorcycle perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just like uh, so this. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so go ahead. No, no, I was going to say connecting the dots is, is definitely the, the thing which you're going from left to right and all that stuff, getting the right lane in advance or the correct lane in advance, just, just having that forward vision. And we have it as well because we know these roads really well. But I mean, would we have done like sometimes you get in the wrong lane if you're in a place you haven't been before? So, you know, is it going to learn um, certain behaviors from certain roads so that we'll be better at least those roads it's taking all the time? But at least we know it can handle the the things that uh, it's never seen before so that yeah. gives me a lot of confidence that it, even if it gets in this situation it's going to it's going to do the safest possible thing so yeah go ahead well yeah, cool and, and final question from everyone uh, does rainbow road work <laughs> yeah, no. i haven't tried it it plays the music it doesn't do the rainbow uh, road uh, uh, that's <laughs> good stuff well thank you both uh for joining us and also thank you to everyone that's uh, joined uh, on the live stream sorry for a few technical issues at the beginning uh we'll put them both together and, and put it on youtube anyone that uh, missed out or missed it um just before we do finish uh i just wanted to remind everyone that uh, our chosen charity for the year is mind the mental health charity so if you do enjoy these events that you do love of tesla but uh uh, it, we would appreciate a, a small donation towards uh, Mind for Health Charity. Uh, so it was just giving slash Tesla Owners UK. And last I looked, it was over a £1,000, uh, going up to 1500 So a big thank you to everyone that's donated. And uh, check out as well. It's great. Uh, we're all affected by mental health. So uh, go for it. Uh, thank you, guys, for watching. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.